Praise the Lord. Are you ready to worship tonight? One thing you learn at our church, that God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you can stand, sit, whatever you want to do, but let's worship him. Lost our sin. Find their way at the sound of your name. All condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Every fear has no sound of your great name. The enemy, he has to leave. Oh, at the sound of your great
everybody you may be seated before I get to giving announcements I'd like to call up Karen for her own announcement all right everyone well this week is going to be September 20 I mean August 29th that's your anniversary <laughs> September 29th their anniversary anyways it's Leanne's birthday coming up on Tuesday so Leanne come, come on up <laughs> She's such a blessing to, to the church, to her family, to her friends, and I'm going to try not to cry. But anyways, <laughs> why don't we stretch our hands out to Leanne, I'm going to pray for her. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you so much for Leanne. We thank you that she's given her life to serve you, Father, and I thank you. Lord, that you continue to guide her and direct her, give her wisdom and knowledge, and in every thing she has to do, um, making decisions, Father, I know that, that she does listen to you, Father, and I thank you that you bless her, you keep her safe, I thank you that her body is totally healthy, I thank you, Father God, that she has a wonderful year to come, and a wonderful birthday on Tuesday, in Jesus' name, amen. So we have a little cake we want to sing to you, so... Don't <laughs> Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God. Happy birthday to I'll take that in just a moment. Or Ellen, can you come get the cake? We don't want it to melt. Right. And you can take your, she, she snatched the frosting that was on the side. But we are going to have cupcakes out in the hallway to celebrate her birthday afterwards. So please be sure to stop. Thank you. Thank Happy you birthday. Well. Thank you. All right, everybody. So make sure when um, service is over to make sure you go get your cupcakes. All right, so um, this is everything happening so far um, for announcements. So all meetings will be held here at 505 Stage Street unless specified otherwise, meaning Saturdays here at 5 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7. And on Sunday, you'll be able to see the service on YouTube. Um, Praise and Worship Night will be the first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Can't stress enough 
If you want to just get filled with praise and worship and the Holy Spirit, definitely, definitely come. You'll be missing out on something special. So just make sure you mark your calendar every first Wednesday of the month. Kids Church is pre-K three and a half and first to sixth grade on Wednesdays. So if you have kids, bring them along. Um, Jesus Pieces Youth Group, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Not going to lie, I'm a little biased towards it because I'm in that group. So you guys don't understand the the power that it um, holds for the youth. And I just really recommend that if you guys know um, anybody that falls into that age group or yourself at home that is, um, definitely come. Um, If you look around, you see products of youth group here. um, So definitely it's a blessed time. Dunamis is um, September 1st at 7.15 p.m. um, with Operation Christmas Child Project. Um, EPIC will be September 24th at 1 p.m. at Twin Lakes and Palatine. The men's meeting is September um, 22nd at 7 p.m. And prayer is every Friday at 10 a.m. And now welcome Randy for the offer. Praise the Lord. Praise God. God is good. God is great. God is faithful. Amen. All those things we said. Man, he's got such a nice head of hair, isn't it? It just makes you kind of jealous, doesn't it? Even I'm jealous. I shouldn't say I'm jealous, but (laughs) praise God. It's nice to have a nice head of hair. Praise God. Uh, (laughs) Gray hair is a sign of wisdom. So praise God. Thank God for wisdom. Amen. Praise God. I'm so thankful. Amen. God is God is good. And I, I'm so thankful for, for you. Amen. For uh, for your presence here in this church and um and uh and what you're doing, what you're giving, your prayer support, your giving support, and everything that you are doing to support the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh as Math- as Matthias was saying. I got it right this time. <laughs> it was time to say, my name is Mr. Randy, and I'd like to receive today's tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And as I always say, you can uh, give uh, here in the uh, here uh, at, at church live with the offering uh, that our offering envelopes are there in front of you, and uh, you also can give in our secure website. Amen. And it's uh, it's such a blessing to give. And so, as I was saying, it's. It's such a blessing to being around great people, great men and men and women of God, and and being around and um, people like Leanne. Amen. It's a blessing having uh, people like that because we have, uh, you know, God puts people in churches and other things in our lives because we have a call on our life. Amen. I like to use um, Psalm ninety one verses one and two, and so um, God has a plan and a purpose for you and in that plan is a calling and a gifting that God has put in your life amen and so uh, we need to be operating in that gift and it says uh, he that dwells in that secret place or the place that God has called you uh, to do to support to encourage to bless to do what God has gifted you to do uh, he that dwells in that secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. Amen. And so as we uh, give, as we uh, do what God has called us to do, amen, we're going to do some great and mighty things. So as we go into the next chapter that God has got planned for us, and I know that Big things are in store for us as we uh, go on with God, as we mature in Christ, as the church grows, we'll be able to do uh, greater things. And so as we're able to do that, as we operate in in the calling and in the secret place that God has called us into, we can uh, see great things. And we'll be able to say of the Lord as we see miracles signs and wonders, healings and deliverances, seeing families turned around and, uh, and great things happening, we'll be able to say that God is our refuge and our fortress. So I just want to take this time to say thank you for your support. Thank you for, for giving, for being a part of Good News Church. Amen. Whether you're here or whether you're online, however you do it, uh, thank you. And so let me pray for your giving. Father, I thank you, Lord, Father, for the people that you've called here to Good News Church, Lord, the people that supports one another, 
and encourages one another. And Father, I thank you for that. And Father, we just pray, Lord, Father, that each and every person's gift, every person's support, Lord, is, is accomplishing what you have called it to accomplish. And Father, we know that that's great things. And so, Father, I just thank you for miracles and one, signs and wonders and healings and deliverances and great things that are happening, that are happening here at Good News. And Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, I want to thank those who worked on, uh, we talked about last uh, week, this, the light that would shine in this, uh, pic, uh, this TV and how it would offend somebody's eyes. And uh, so they put a diffuser on the light. They've worked at it. And I like uh, Mike uh, Stamer, who was uh, working with us. Uh, he said to me just before the service, he said, I don't know if it's better or worse, but we tried. So... <laughs> So we, they tried to make it better, and prayerfully it will not offend your eyes. It will help your eyes, and you'll be able to push that aside and receive from God. Amen? God is good. Uh, there's someone who's not able to be here with us today because she's fighting off some things in her body is Donna Simpson. And Donna Simpson is somebody we love, we cherish, we we just so glad she's part of our body. When I talked to her the other day, she was in the hospital, and they were trying to figure out what was going on. But we believe in the power of prayer. Amen? Amen. I remember a long time ago, I listened to Oral Roberts, a man of God, speak about how he went around America and had healing crusades. But yet when he, uh, he talked to us uh, down in Oral Roberts University, he had this, these two hands, uh, praying hands, right in front of the university. And he said what that represented to him was the healing power of God and the healing power of medicine, how they can work together. And so I like that, how we can just believe God that he can work with medicine or he can just do it all by himself, but he can work with it. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and pray for Donna Simpson. And uh, first of all, I want you to just clap, let her know you love her. And let's just pray for her. Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray for you, Donna, and we command that body to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command all sickness and all else that's attacking you to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. We release the healing power of God and the healing power of love into you right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God. As we look around the world, we look around our country, you look around your family, sometimes you look even closer, you say, man, oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on, what am I supposed to do? Trust God. That's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Several times in the Bible, the Bible tells us the benefits and how important it is for us to push out all the worry and just simply to trust God. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not upon your own understanding. You're never going to figure it all out. Just, just go ahead and trust God. In Proverbs 29 verse 25, it says, the fear of men bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. My friend, uh, something may be coming at you, something at work, something in the country, something in, in the family. Just trust God. That's our job, just to work on trusting him. Amen? In Isaiah chapter 26, in verse 3 and 4, it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. As we trust him, we got we start getting filled up with strength. As we tell ourselves, I'm just going to trust God no matter what, I'm trusting God. In Psalm, Psalm 56 and verse 3, I like this psalm because this is the this is David. The psalmist himself wrote this. This is somebody who's faith, faced a lion, a bear, a Goliath. Of someone trying to kill him with a spear, his own son coming against him. And this is what he said. I love this, just the honesty of this statement. He says, but when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. Uh, you say, I, I don't want to admit that I have a little bit of fear. Don't worry about that. The David said, when I fear, I put my trust in God. Amen? So, so when that tries to rise up, you say, okay, I see it's there, but I'm going to put my trust in God. In Psalm 118 and verse 8 and 9, it says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to depend on people. Uh, you ever find that out? 
You know, and then it says something even more interesting to me, and that is verse nine. It says, "It is it is better to trust in the Lord than to depend on human leaders." Uh, you look around the country, you look around uh, different places, uh, and you go, "Man, who can we trust?" Uh, and really, it's God you can trust. Amen. So trust God is what we want to talk about today. We're going to look at a man who really trusted God when he had every reason to not trust God, but yet he trusted God. His name is Hezekiah. Some of you may know a little bit about Hezekiah in the Old Testament. He is an Old Testament figure that we can learn a lot from. We're going to look at him, and we're, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about Hezekiah and then uh, look at what he faced and how he handled it. It'll help us, those who are uh, facing a fear, those who are having a hard our time in their life, I want you to know that you can trust God. Amen? So Hezekiah had a father. His name was Ahaz. Uh, think about this, Ahaz. That's quite a name. It's, it's a nice name. But, but now the kingdom of Israel had been divided. Now, we need to know this. The kingdom of Israel had been divided. There had been some things that took place. We're not going to go into that today. But just so you know, Israel had been divided. It had been one kingdom, and then all of a sudden it was two kingdoms. There was the northern kingdom, which was still called Israel, and the southern kingdom, was, which was called Judah. And that's where the term Jew or Jews got from is the part Judah. And so now uh, we find out that the, the northern part did not really uh, adhere to God as much as the southern uh, Judah was going to uh, adhere to God. Now, King Ahaz, the, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hezekiah's father, he was a bad king and he was in charge of the southern kingdom of Judah. He was a terrible man. I mean, if you go through your Bible and read about Ahaz or get online and look up Ahaz, the king of Judah, when he was there, he did terrible things. He, uh, he took the temple of God and he shut the doors and he had them nail nails so they could not get in. He opened up other places so they could worship. And then he had uh, uh, sexual things taking place in front of sometimes inside the very places that he opened up for them and said, here, go worship God. He had pagan altars that people would go to. And then again, there'd be all kinds of things taking place. He, he was just a, a, a terrible man. He took any, and he, and he took the, the Levitical priesthood that was supposed to, what was anointed by God and was supposed to be offering sacrifices in the temple. And he shut them down. He said, no, we're not going to have a Levitic, a, a, a Levitic, a, a, the Levites as priests were taking them out. And then he also took away Passover. Passover, they're supposed to celebrate Passover. He said, we will not celebrate Passover. It's all over. So this guy was a, a real bad king. And now his son, we're talking about Hezekiah, comes along. Sometimes we say, um, do we have to be like our parents? Oh, well, Hezekiah wasn't at all. Somebody says, so it's a family curse. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be a family curse. You can just say, no, it's not coming into me. You can change everything by just saying it, amen? And Ahaz was a terrible, terrible, terrible king. In the annals of the Bible and in, in, in Jewish history, they'll tell you he was a terrible, terrible, terrible king. He turned against God. He turned to other gods. He, he worshiped idols. He, he did all these kind of things. But then his son, this son, Hezekiah, came along. And he just cleaned everything up. He went around, he took those temples that had perversion in front of them, and he tore them up and burnt them. He took idols that were being uh, used to worship other gods, and he took and he burnt those and smashed them, got rid of those. He, he, he did some things that were unbelievable. He just cleaned the place up. He said, I'm tired of this garbage. We'll not worship any place but the temple of Almighty God that God told us to worship at, and that's where we're going to worship God. In fact, one of the things he took, and this is how people can do, uh, it had become a religious thing. The people took the bronze serpent. Remember the bronze serpent in the wilderness? Uh, snakes were biting the people, and they were dying. And God said, make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and when you, if you'll look at the pole and believe me, you'll be healed. That, that was a representation a representation of Jesus Christ being on the cross. But what they had done is they'd taken that bronze serpent and they started offering sacrifices to the bronze serpent and they were starting to worship the bronze serpent. And so he, Hezekiah, took that and he smashed that, burned it, and melted it, and got rid of it. Everybody say, thank God. You know, sometimes in a nation or a country, a house and a home, in a town, even in a church, they can start worshiping things and get away from things God really wants them to get a, uh, really to do. Um, 
But Hezekiah, he comes on the throne, not like his father Ahaz did all the bad things. He does just totally the opposite. He, he, he smashes all that. He burns the bronze temple. And then he goes to the temple of God, the temple of God that was supposed to be used to worship God. And he pulled the nails out of the doors. He cleaned the doors. He, he, he opened them up. He went inside and he cleaned everything on the inside of him. He reopened the Levitical priesthood. He reestablished the Passover and said, we will celebrate Passover and you will not go to those perverted places and worship God. That is, that's not true. That's not where God's at. You come to the temple of God. Hezekiah put God first, no matter what the nation had said, he put God first. If you agree, we should put God first. Then you would agree with Hezekiah. So the very first point today is simply this. When you put God first, he'll bless you. When you put God first, he will bless you. And you'll see this in the story of Hezekiah. Remember what he did. He didn't go along with his father. Sometimes dads just unfortunately lead us wrong. He had to go against some of the silly stuff his dad had done and redo it and give God honor. And when you put God first, he will bless you. If you believe that, say amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and verse 21, it says this. He was successful, speaking of Hezekiah, says he was successful. Uh, maybe you want to be successful. Watch this. Because everything he did for the temple or observance of the law, he did in a spirit of complete loyalty and devotion to his God. He put God first. He redid everything, and he put God first. And when you put God first, he is going to bless you. Amen? Now, Jesus Christ even said that when he was on this earth over in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you and I put God first, he'll bless us. Amen. We learned it from Hezekiah. He was successful because he put God first. And Jesus comes along and says, if you'll put God first, all these things will be added unto you and you'll be blessed. So here he is obeying God, listening to God, reopening the temple, reestablishing Passover, reestablishing the Levitical priesthood, uh, cleaning up and tearing down those places. They said you can go worship God and were perverted and sexual perversion going on inside of those places. He got rid of all that. He burned it. The nation was pure. The nation was clean. The, the nation had been re-energized for God by, because of one man's decision. But then, everybody say, but then... Maybe you've started living for God, or maybe you started giving God your, your heart and changing things in your life, and then a but then comes along. And, and you, how do you handle the but thens, the things that come along that kind of try to want to destroy you or come against you, even because you're living for God? Uh, so, but then, here he is, Hezekiah, doing all these things great, and God will bless you when you put him first. And all of a sudden, the Assyrian army shows up. The Assyrian army from Assyria. The Assyrian army was the dominant power in the world at that time. They had conquered so many other countries. They had kicked over other kingdoms and killed other kings. And here they, they come and they invade Judah. They come into Judah. Here he's the king, but now the Assyrian army comes into Judah, marches right up to Jerusalem, and now they're going to invade Jerusalem and they're going to destroy the temple. And they had already, by the way, destroyed or conquered the northern kingdom. There was nobody on the throne like Hezekiah in the northern kingdom. So the Assyrians had already taken the northern kingdom, and now they march down. They come into Judah, come into Jerusalem, and now they're going to destroy Jerusalem and, and all the people there. Now listen to Hezekiah, because my friend, maybe something's coming against you. Maybe we look around the world and we say America is something happening to America. Maybe we look around and say, yeah, we're tired of people mocking, making fun of Christianity. Maybe it's something at work, but I just want you to know when it looks like you're going to lose, when the army that's defeated so many other places, the enemy who you see other people falling, you don't have to fall. Listen to Hezekiah in Second Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 8. It says, he may have a, this is Hezekiah speaking to the people. He said, he, meaning the king of Assyria, says he may have a great army, but they are merely men. 
We have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. Hezekiah's words greatly encouraged the people. My friend, there's times when we just have to say to everybody, hey, it may look bad, but we've got God on our side. Amen. It may look really bad, but we've got God on our side. Now, now, now I want to talk to you for a moment. I, I sat in my chair in my devotional time about a week ago reading this, and, and it really, really dealt with me. And that's why we're speaking about it today. How the king of Assyria mocked. He mocked Hezekiah. He mocked Hezekiah's God. He mocked Hezekiah's belief. He mocked his religion. And my friend, there's people who mock Christianity right now. There's people that mock the God of Christianity. And there's people that mock Christians today. If you've noticed that, say amen. And so we can learn from this story. Uh, Here this king of Assyria marches in. He's already destroyed so many other kingdoms. He's so uh, full of himself. He's so full of himself. So he comes in, he starts mocking the king of Hezekiah. He mocks Hezekiah mocks the God of Hezekiah, mocks the faith of Hezekiah. And so now we're going to read what this king says. I'm going to stop every so often because there's some things he says here that I think maybe you've heard uh, people say about Christianity or even about Jesus or about believers. It says here in Second uh, Chronicles chapter 32 and verse 10, it says, this is what the king um, Sernacherib of Assyria says. Now this is the king of Assyria. And this is what he's saying. So the people of Judah will hear it. He says, what are you trusting in that makes you think you can survive my siege of Jerusalem? Hezekiah has said, the Lord, our God will rescue us from the king of Assyria. Now this is him talking, the king of Assyria. Surely Hezekiah is misleading you. You know, when I tell you God, that can get you through something. I'm not misleading you. I'm telling you, and when your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, another believer tells you God can deliver you, they are not misleading you. And this king is telling them that Hezekiah, when he tells you a God will help you, he's misleading you. Uh, something uh, sentencing, misleading you, sentencing, sentencing, sentencing you to death by famine and thirst. He says, Hezekiah is telling you the, the, a lie, and he's sentencing you to death uh, through a famine. He goes on in verse 12. Don't you realize that Hezekiah, the very person who destroyed all the Lord's shrines and altars, he did not destroy Almighty God's shrines and altars. He commanded Judah and Jerusalem to worship only at the altar at the temple, and to offer sacrifice on it alone. Yeah, because that's what we ought to do. Amen? But now this perverted man goes on. He says, surely you must realize what I and the other kings of Assyria before me have done to all the people of the earth. This is where the devil and others in leadership and other positions around you might tell you, Christianity doesn't have a, have a chance. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Watch. Were any of those gods of these nations able to rescue their people from my power? Uh, probably not, but it wasn't the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, their gods couldn't deliver them. What makes you think you, uh, your God's going to deliver you? Verse 24 says, which of their gods was able to rescue the people from the destruct- destructive power of my predecessors? What makes you think that your God can rescue you from me? It doesn't the devil whisper that in your ear sometimes? Why do you think something's going to be different? God's not going to help you. God's not going to help you. God's not going to And that's what this guy's being used to the devil to say to these guys. Don't let Hezekiah deceive you, the man of God. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him fool you like this. I say it again. No God of any nation or kingdom has ever yet been able to rescue his people from me or my ancestors. 
how much less will your God rescue you from my power? That is something the devil whispers in believers' ears. God can't help you. God can't turn that thing around. God, will you think God's going to turn it around? I, I, I've got you uh, pegged. I, I, you're defeated. No, he's a liar just like this king was a liar. Amen? It goes on in verse uh, 15. It says, and Sir Nekarub officials now now he has his officials speak for him too further mock the lord god do you know sometimes there's people in leadership of a country of a school and even of a church of a family that mocks god almighty and says here they mock the lord god and his servant hezekiah keeping insult upon insult if you ever been made fun of for believing god for something I'm sorry. I am. And Hezekiah would know what it felt like. He said in there, Jerusalem, this king has come against him. And they're telling his people, he's misled you. Your God can't help you. Nobody else's God has ever helped them against us. And you're not going to make it. It says in verse 17, the king also sent letters. Uh, screw, uh, I can't read it. It's nice and dark up here now, but that means I can't read it as good. The Lord, the God of Israel, he wrote, just as the gods of other nations failed to rescue their people from my power, so the God of Hezekiah will also fail. The Syrian officials who brought the letter shout these things in he, in Hebrew to the people gathered on the walls of the city, trying to terrify them. Uh, so it would be easier to capture the city. These officials talked about the God of Jerusalem as though he were one of the pagan gods made by human hands. Our God is not a pagan God. And we didn't make this thing up. God is a creator of the whole world. God is the, the one who hung the stars in the sky. Almighty God is the one that put the sun where it is, the moon where it is. Almighty God is the one who bent down and created man and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. Almighty God is the one who sent Jesus Christ so we can be saved and, and be free from the bondages of Satan. Our God is able to do that. He's not like some pagan God. Amen? Now, this is what they're saying. And now, well, listen to King Hezekiah. Then King Hezekiah, this is what you and I can do. When the world starts telling us, nah, when the world starts telling us, uh -uh. when the world starts telling us, mm -mm. when the world starts telling us that, watch what Hezekiah did. He didn't go in a corner and start crying. Listen, then Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz, cried out in prayer to God in heaven. They were trying to get him not to look to God, and yet he looked to God and he prayed to God. Amen. It's time for America to pray. It's time for Good News Church to pray. It's time for your family and my family to pray. It's time for us to pray. And when the devil tells us, uh, 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 I can overcome you. I've already whipped this country. I've already whipped this family. I've already whipped this family. I've already whipped that Christian. I've already whipped that Christian. Oh, I don't know what happened there, but all I know is I'm going to pray, and we're going to whip you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Here goes verse 21. And the Lord sent an angel who destroyed the Assyrian army with all its commanders and officers. So see, now rack above. <laughs> I like to say it different every time. You know what I did? I went online and listened to it three different times, and, and three of the different translations, because you can get on our hand and read it to you. They said it differently. I said, well, thanks a lot. Thanks for helping me say this. So now I just wing it. It's kind of like a brother. Sumra, my, my pastor said, when you come across a word in the Bible, you can't say, just say it any way you want. And every, half the people will say, oh, that's how you say it. <laughs> the other people will say, I knew that's how you said it. Was forced, he was forced, the king of Assyria was forced to return home in disgrace to his own home. 
And when he entered the temple of his God, remember his God was bigger than some of his own sons killed him there with a sword. When you put God first, God will bless you. Second point today is simply this. Trust God. You're not alone. You say, I, I, I know what you're saying, Pastor. Uh, God is with me. Well, yeah, I'm saying that, but that's not what I'm saying only. Hezekiah is with you. His example. David, his example is with you. You're not alone. And other Christians in this room and other Christians around the room world are facing some things. You're not alone. It's not some strange thing that we're facing. Others have faced it. They have faced it at different times. So you're not alone. And the same God that delivered them will deliver us. We're not alone. Yes, God is with us. But also we have, even those that have passed on, we have a, a crowd encompassed around about us that we can look to and remember how they stood and how they prayed and how they got victory. They encompassed all around about us. Look at Hezekiah. Look over at Daniel. Look at David. Remember, we are not alone. We may face some difficult times. They face difficult times. We're not alone facing difficult times. They went to God. We go to God. They got victory, and we'll get victory. Amen? Uh, Point three is simply this. Trust God. He will not be mocked. Oh, he'll put up with it for a while, and then it stops. God will not be mocked. He'll put up with it for a while because there's always a chance the Holy Spirit will touch somebody and they'll open their heart. But after a while, God will not be mocked. They made fun of him. The king of Assyria mocked him, made fun of him. The officials made fun of God. Uh, God will not be mocked. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, it says this, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. My friend, uh, trust God. He'll not be mocked. You just continue to trust God. He'll handle it. Amen? You trust God. He's going to handle the situation. The Syrian king, uh, he found out, oh, you don't mess with God. Goliath found out, oh, man, I was mocking God. I got my head cut off. Not a good thing. You don't mock God. And even Daniel, if you remember, the other leaders in his day wanted Daniel not to have the power. So they went ahead and they made a story about Daniel. They tried to get him thrown in the lion's den, and they did. But in the long run, you can't mock God. They ended up in the lion's den, and they died. Say this with me. Trust God. You can't mock God. And those that are coming against you, don't worry. God will either touch them and draw them in, or he'll take care of it. Uh, say, trust God. Um, it's not over. That's, that's the next point, point four. It's not over. Trust God. It's not over. They came into Jerusalem. They had already had defeated the northern kingdom. They now came into the southern kingdom of Judah. They came right there to Jerusalem, right where the temple, the holy temple was. They're coming against him. Hezekiah, they're mocking him, making fun of him. And it looks like it's all over. I mean, they've already taken the northern kingdom. They've taken all these other kingdoms. No other kingdom has ever stood before him. It looks like it's done. It looks like it's over. If you and I were betting, we'd say, oh, my goodness, it's over. But no, trust God. It's not over, my friend. Whatever's happening in your life, trust God. It's not over. Trust God. It's not. You say, but look, no, it, trust God. It's not over. You say, yeah, but no, trust God. Somebody said, America, trust God. It's not over. There's a remnant. There's people in this world that are praying for America. There's churches around the world and around this country that's praying for America. Trust God. It's not over. 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 Say with me. Trust God. It's not over. Say it again. Trust God, it's not over. It's not. Hezekiah found out. It looked bad. People were probably looking at him and saying, what have you got us into? He said, trust God. It's not over. They, they would have been looking at Joseph. Remember Joseph in the Bible? People would have said, it's over for you. You thought you had a call in your life? So you thought, Peppy, that you had a call in your life? You thought for a moment you had a call in your life? It's over. No, 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 Joseph would say, 
I'm going to trust God. It's not over. Amen. So in your life, young man, or your, your life, young lady, the devil will tell you it's over. In my life, the devil has said to me several times, it's over. But why don't we just say back to him, trust God. It's not over. I met with my, my brother and myself went over to uh, uh, South Bend, Indiana, met with Brother Lester Sarmal. I met in his office, and he sat in there, and he's telling my brother and I, and I, I was, I had gone to Brother Sarmal's church, I had gone to his school, so I, I knew him, and I knew he was a mighty, po- uh, powerful man of God. You know, I couldn't imagine a demon even want to be around him, you know. And uh, he told us a story about how he was woke up, and the devil was there and told him that he's going to kill him and destroy him. I left her. I said, what? My brother said, don't worry. He's trusting God. He was just telling us the story so we'll pray with him and believe with him. My friend, when another believer says, you know, the devil's telling me this. You don't mock him, make fun of him, tell him, well, where's your lack of faith? You encourage him and say, let's trust God. And Brother Summerall went on to, to build a, a beautiful church. He went on to do some even more work for God before he went on to be uh, have his heavenly reward. Uh, the devil was wrong. Trust God for you. And Gary, it's not over. Randy, it's not over. Kirk, uh, he, you're the senior citizen around here, you tell us. Uh, but, but Kirk, it's not over. Jim, it's not over for you. It's not over for you, Patsy. Joanne, it's not over for you. Rhoda, Listen to me. It's not over for you. Matthias, it ain't even begin for you, buddy. It, even with that beautiful long hair, it ain't over. Okay? <laughs> even if mama cuts your hair, it, you haven't lost your power. It's not over. Everybody say, trust God. It's not over. Good news, church. Those in the overflow room, those here. Maybe we're not where we wanted to be as soon as we wanted to be there. But trust God. My friend, it's not over. And who are we listening to? Are we listening to that king of Assyria telling us, oh, it's the... No. Trust God. It's not over. Turn to somebody and say, trust God. It's not over. In your life today. In your life today. What has come against you? What has tried to smash you? What has whispered to you in the late hours of the night or early morning hours? What has plagued you and what has whispered and said to you it's over? It's a damnable lie. It's a damnable lie that will damn you, that will hurt you, that will harm you, that will never allow you to enjoy the things of God. My friend, it's not over. The Syrian army thought they had him. The king of Assyria ends up having his own sons when he's in the temple of his so-called powerful gods. It's not over for you, my friend. You hear me? It's not over for you. It's not over for you, sir or ma'am. It's not over for you. It's not over for good news. It's not over for you. It's not over. It's trust God. It's not over. In Jesus' name, I declare it along with the word of God. I I, want to go along with Hezekiah. It's not over, my friend. They have an enemy. They bring their gods, but we have a God that's more powerful than them. They, the enemy, they come at us in flesh and blood. We come at them in the power of Almighty God. Amen? Um, Trust God. He'll bless you if you put him first. Trust God. You're not alone. There's others that are fighting, but also the Spirit of God is with you. Trust God. He won't allow himself to be mocked. For long. Trust God. It's not over. Trust God. Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless all those who have been shaken, who've been attacked, whose home or mind has been attacked almost like Hezekiah, where the enemy comes in, comes right to the doors or gates of Jerusalem. I pray for them. And I say the God of heaven, 
the God of Abraham, Jacob, of Isaac. I say the God who sent his son, Jesus Christ. I say that God is still alive. He's not died. And I say that God is more powerful than any, any, any other gods, little G's. And I say no matter who has fallen to the right or to the left, our God is with us. Our God would not allow himself to be mocked. Our God will bless us and strengthen us. Our God is not done in our lives. Father, I thank you. And I give you praise. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father God. God's not done with you, my friend. God's not done with you. Trust him. Trust him. Trust God. Look over to me for a minute. Hezekiah, when he sat on the throne first, was 25 years old. Not too long after the. This is when the king came against him. He sat on the throne for 29 years. God's not done with you. Be blessed. I love you and have a great day. Why don't you stand with me, if you would, please, as my brother plays. We're just going to stand and give our God that we can trust, honor. birthday in just a couple days it's 29th so maybe she wants to come up and sing did you want to come sing with her oh okay i guess i just check it just check it that's there with you right now. The God that's been touching you during this service. The God that's been letting his Holy Spirit touch your heart. Say, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. The God of Hezekiah still reigns on high. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. In Jesus' name, we love you. We speak the blessings of God over you. God bless you. Please turn to somebody as you get ready to go and say, trust God. He's not done with you. You're dismissed.